And, and George, this issue of battery innovation is just such a fascinating one. Uh, how much can Tesla push the envelope on the technology that they already have with software? You know, Corey, they've been able to push the envelope an amazing amount, and I think we're all on the edges of our seats to see what uh, Elon is going to say tomorrow. Their battery is basically a set of computer batteries. It's they're repackaged, of course, for the Tesla. They take up a lot of space. And his uh, sort of announcement that he's going to make an announcement is a little strange because Tesla already goes farther than most electric cars. So I, and I think everyone else, uh, am very curious to see what he's going to say. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder, as it relates to Argon, I mean, you guys have tried, been trying to push the edge technologically of batteries much further than Tesla, uh, and without yet, I, I don't want to rub it in, but I, I wonder how you guys look at Tesla. You say, why didn't we just get some duct tape and some computer, computer batteries and do what Tesla's doing? You know, that's a great question, and there's a very solid answer to it. The reason is that lithium-ion batteries, which is what Tesla and all the other manufacturers use, just doesn't have it in itself to go more than about 50%. Real optimists would tell you a factor of two more than what it does now. It's just theoretically not possible. So we're taking the next step. We want to look beyond lithium-ion, get something that's a factor of five better, and that's something that lithium-ion just won't be able to achieve. So it's a bit of a gamble. Uh, it's very aspirational. It's very visionary. It's very aggressive. But we think we can do it. And I think the community would agree. We gave ourselves a rather short time scale. We said five years. That's the length of our contract with DOE. It might take a little bit longer, but I think the answer is out there. So I want to talk, I don't want to get into the weeds with this. I, I think it's so fascinating, but I, but I think it's interesting how Tesla has used um, uh, the infrastructure of tax credits to fund their business and their development. And that maybe one of the reasons they couldn't wait is because the credits are available now. If you look across the map of all the places where you can get tax credits uh, for building the cars in California, as, as long as they're selling cars in you know, the list of states, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont, uh, uh, you know, and, and a few other states in, in New England, um, they're getting, and, and Arizona now at least of all, uh, they're getting tax credits based on how many cars they produce uh, to be sold in those states. And those credits are available now and probably not later. Is that something that factors into the economics of what you guys are doing? And how do you see Tesla benefiting from that? So I think it is one of the motivators for Tesla. And common sense would tell you that it is. Elon, of course, is smart enough to figure most of these things out. I don't think it has a big effect on what we're doing. Because what we uh, are producing, we hope to transfer to manufacturing maybe in a few years, and it will take the manufacturer another three to five years to bring it out. So we're really talking about maybe something that's five to ten years out from now, and probably the tax structure is going to be different. My sense yeah, is uh, that... Go ahead, Corey. Well, to that, I mean, in the last quarter, Tesla, 33% of their growth, gross profits, I mean, talk about how they're leaning on these tax credits. Quarter before last, 37% of gross profits were from these tax credits, not from the sale of cars. 33% were from these tax credits in the last quarter. And, yeah. and Tesla says that's going away. Is that worrisome when you think about how this business works? Well, I think that uh, Tesla has to try hard to get its market bigger. That's just a sign that uh, the present revenue generation mechanism is shrinking and maybe going away completely. And that means he needs to sell more cars. And my sense is that's one reason for the announcement tomorrow to make it more appealing to people to buy a Tesla car or the next generation Tesla car. We, we hear about what's coming in the future that will cost us maybe $30,000 instead of 70000 And that's a real step. Then it's starting to approach the mass market. Uh, and probably he's feeling, you know, the, the pressure of time. Yeah, last question, yes, no. Uh, George Crabtree, do you think they're going to have a, a $30,000 car in the next two years? I hope they do. I mean, I was one of the ones that was waiting for the $50,000 car, which turned out to be a $70,000 car. And I'm on the verge of buying. So if, if the price gets low enough, I'm there.